uh, to answer uh, our question, what we gain uh, in dealing with philosophical uh, thinking, uh, perhaps uh, is uh, uh, very easy uh, when uh, we keep in mind uh, those uh, academics uh, who made uh, an academic, uh, uh, intellectual uh, and public career uh, just writing philosophical books. And uh, I would say that they are some like this, and uh, I would like to, to draw your attention to one uh, extremely uh, prolific uh, writer uh, and a real uh, Renaissance uh, woman, uh, Marta uh, Nussbaum. Uh, she wrote so many books uh, that only to listed them uh, will take uh, our 15 minutes, so I will not do it, uh, but uh, you can easily uh, look at any uh, online sources and, and you will see that uh, really since years uh, Marta Nussbaum is present in the public um, debates. Uh, she has a reputation to be one of the most influential women um, in philosophical field, uh, of course, uh, of um, the present time. And uh, what is also interesting uh, is uh, that she um, not only write books, but in a way illustrate uh, through her life choices um, her ideas. Uh, she was one of the first uh, who became a professor of philosophy. Now she's uh, still teaching at uh, Chicago University. Mm, or oh, she was born in 1947, and uh, uh, first choice was not philosophy. Uh, she wanted to be an actress, uh, she studied theater, um, she was involved in many, many projects, but finally uh, it seems that philosophy is, is really her, her place. Um, uh, what I would like also to, to add, uh, and already in your questions in chat, uh, uh, which uh, are returning, uh, namely how religion and phil philosophy is connected. So uh, if some of you thinking uh, more about this, I think this is worth it to, to look uh, in the preface or introductions of, of some of her books where exactly she's dealing with this. Although she's expert in, in ancient philosophy, she wrote extensively on Greeks, on, on, on Plato, on Aristoteles, etc., etc. But uh, nevertheless, uh, for her, her own home became Judaism, which is uh, not so unusual in the United States. But in, in the case of someone who professionally is dealing with the uh, ancient philosophy, this life choice, she was born as a Protestant, but uh, because she, she married a, a, a Jew, uh, she decided to, to convert uh, to Judaism. And I think this is a, a very interesting choice because uh, she discovered this uh, philosophical dimension in, in Judaism, which is more present uh, in, in Reform Judaism than in her Christianity. So it's also interesting to compare sometimes uh, uh, which kind of Christianity someone inherited, uh, which kind of Christianity someone discovered during his or her life, and why some, someone decided to move to another religion or to abandon religion at all. So we will 
deal with these questions in the future, but I just mentioned it that this is not only your, those of you who ask this question, but also for intellectuals who are um, professionally dealing with these questions. And they not only write about, but translate it, so to say, in uh, their respective uh, life uh, decisions. Uh, one of few titles which I nevertheless want to mention is uh, one uh, book uh, published in uh, 1986, uh, Fragility of Goodness. Why I would like to draw your attention only to the title that uh, Martha Nussbaum has this um, feeling for fragility of something which is important, precious, but nevertheless we need to take care of some values. They are not so obvious, so to say. They could disappear from our life if we are not taking care of, the, of, the, of them uh, um, sufficiently. Another uh, uh, book which I uh, just mentioned, uh, would like to mention, is um, a, a book written 10 years later, Sex and Social Justice. I think uh, we are paying too little attention to this gender uh, problem in, in our uh, philosophical tradition. And thanks God, we have philosophers like uh, Martha Nussbaum, who dealt with this problem in, in, again as a woman in a very existential way. She's connecting uh, uh, gender um, inequality with, with uh, social justice. So we need to be aware how sometimes patriarchal paradigm um, has this uh, uh, injustice element that, you, that uh, um, taking for granted certain uh, regulations, for example, in the religious institutions, we are like uh, resigning to, to fight against injustice. And uh, she is a woman who experienced in, in, in tolerant open uh, campus at the American universities uh, in Harvard, where she studied, she experienced exactly this pressure of um, inequality uh, connected uh, with, uh, with, with gender, with, with the sex differences. And uh, my main point, which I would like to, to deal with in the second half of, of this uh, second film, is her book published uh, two years ago, one of, the, of her last book. Um, and I, I have to, to, to say that for me it is, um, was, I, when I read it, and I hope that you will spend some time to, to, to read or one chapter or, or perhaps uh, just introduction uh, and perhaps uh, after um, encouragement of the author you will you will dig in uh, uh, but the title is extremely I would say um, appealing and naming what is the most important perhaps uh, globally speaking, not only in America. But the title is The Monarchy of Fear. The Monarchy of Fear, I think is a very strong title. Monarchy, kingdom, dominance, uh, you know, the, what, what is dominating uh, our heads, our hearts uh, is fear. And, and she named it, and, and uh, she uh, is uh, reflecting, uh, reflected upon with her um, philosophical instruments. Uh, in, in fact, the, the, the second part of the, of the title is A Philosopher Looks at Our Political Crisis. So more we will... Uh, speak about the relationship between politics and uh, 
and the philosophy in next week, perhaps including also the final result of the current um, elections. Uh, but I think um, what is important and now I'm not dealing uh, and I'm not interested really in, in, uh, in your political choices or political sympathies. What is important that we um, using philosophical education, philosophical tradition, philosophical instruments that we are able to detect what is the deepest motivation behind uh, some uh, political declarations or uh, media appearances, etc., etc. So, uh, and I think this is a very interesting approach for of someone uh, as Marta Nussbaum, who is a very successful woman, who, as I said, uh, gained many uh, honor doctorates around the world, a very important prize in, in Japan, Kyoto Prize, etc., etc. So we can say she has nothing to, 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 to be afraid of, of, to fear of. But nevertheless, if you have this uh, philosophical temperament, and I will speak more in my uh, third part about um, my own uh, uh, experience uh, of gaining something from from philosophy. Here, I, I just want to draw your attention to to, to this book, the the monarchy of fear. That uh, uh, thanks to her philosophical training, philosophical preparation, her um, perfect knowledge of tradition, she detect that what is the dominant. Uh, feeling the dominant uh, factor which uh, um, shaping the world views of many people is fear. And uh, I think this is a very, um, on the one hand, scary because uh, we can ask us uh, ourselves why in America fear is so uh, spread why America being, uh, uh, you know, for so many people a dream country, uh, so many people want to go to United States, but those who are living there are, are in the grasp of fear. So this kind of analysis, I think, is a very, very important that we gain a new insight into the reality of the people. And, you know, the, the, the possible um, uh, reflection on, on the reality in the United States are, are very, the variety are, are extremely, you know, different. You can, you can go and to understand why the police are so violent, why the prisons are, are, are so packed with the people there why uh, the polarization is so big and so on and so on. So, so there are so many um, questions which we have reading about United States, perhaps having friends there and being in, in, in touch with them through social media or whatever media you are using. This is very uh, important that uh, uh, you, you, keep, you, you take one, one uh, book like this of, of uh, um, Marta Nussbaum and you have a key which allowed you, permit you to enter into, uh, so to say, soul of American people. And this is why it's worth it to study philosophy and why it's worth it to, to spend time, uh, just reflect, uh, read uh, and, and uh, try to gain more and more possible knowledge and insight from those uh, texts uh, which uh, you are able to read because so many people don't have time, don't know uh, languages. So you are happy people because you can read, you can gain more knowledge and uh, you can have, uh, I hope so, more and more experiences of Eureka, now I understand better. So, 
next time I will say something about myself.